This video talks about a quick review of preeclampsia and eclampsia. Now, the only difference between eclampsia and preeclampsia is that um, eclampsia is going to have seizures and preeclampsia is not going to have any seizures. So, eclampsia, preeclampsia has hypertension, edema, proteinuria. I have a mnemonic here which is HEP, which works great for me. And in eclampsia, when you start, when the mother starts to have seizures, that's when you know that it has moved on from preeclampsia to eclampsia. Now, these are not the only things that you have to know about um, eclampsia and preeclampsia. There are other things that is also important to know. For example, what is the time period where you're going to have eclampsia or preeclampsia? So anything between 20 weeks until six weeks postpartum is going to be uh, eclampsia or preeclampsia. Anything before that is just considered, um, you have to think more on the track that it could be uh, a mole, a high digit form mole, rather than eclampsia or preeclampsia. So anything before this time period is going to be considered a molar pregnancy. Now, what kind of patients who are more prone to have uh, eclampsia or preeclampsia? Is it everyone or there's a specific group of people who are more prone to uh, these kind of uh, diseases? Well, uh, any patient or any um, pregnant woman who has previous incidence of hypertension or pre-existing hypertension, someone suffering from diabetes, someone who has chronic renal disease, someone who has autoimmune disorders, all these people have incre increased incidence of having eclampsia or preeclampsia. Now, what other associated symptoms are you going to see with uh, these two diseases? Well, you can have headache, which makes sense. You can have blurry vision. You can have abdominal pain, edema of the face and the extremities, altered mental status, hyperreflexia, thrombocytopenia, hyperuricemia, all those are associated with, uh, with eclampsia or preeclampsia. Of those, the most important ones would have to be thrombocytopenia or hyperuricemia. Anytime I see thrombocytopenia in a pregnant woman who lies between 20 weeks gestation and until delivery, I have to think that, okay, this could be eclampsia or preeclampsia. That's when I start looking for other things in the clinic, clinical vignette. Also with hyperuricemia, not as specific, but it's still a good indication whether this, per, this particular patient would have eclampsia or preeclampsia. Now, the next question I want to put forward to you is that can a patient with uh, eclampsia or preeclampsia die from this particular disease? And the answer is yes. Uh, imagine that the situation is so severe that the patient is having seizures. So if you have hemorrhage in the brain, that can actually kill the mother. ARDS can also um, have a significant effect on the patient and that can also be the cause of mortality. Now the next uh, point I want to talk about is treatment. What is the treatment of um, eclampsia or preeclampsia? Well, as soon as you uh, realize that the patient is having eclampsia, the, mo the best thing to do is deliver the baby as soon as possible because that reduces the threat to the mother and to the baby. Okay, So delivering the fetus right away is the best thing to do. Um, because the mother can die from it and the baby also can die from it. The mother can die from hemorrhage in the brain and the baby can die because there is a placental ischemia. So the mother stops giving as much blood to the baby um, and the trophoblasts kind of stops, stops invading the placenta and there is less blood flow. And during that crucial period of uh, growth, if you have let less blood flow, that can have a significant effect on to the baby and the baby can actually die. So again, the, um, the treatment for this particular problem is delivering the baby right away, if it's possible. Other things that you can do is that you can ask the patient to be completely on bed, bed rest. Um, there, you can ask the patient to have salt restriction and also treatment of hypertension is necessary in this, uh, in this incident. If it is a medical emergency, then you can give IV magnesium sulfate and diazepam to uh, control the situation. 
Now, let's talk about this question that we have here. Um, this is a 38-year-old primigravid woman at 34 weeks gestation comes to the physician because of swelling of her hands and feet. So she's pregnant and she has swelling of her hands and feet. Uh, already, I found one of the things of the hep edema. Now, her blood pressure is 158 over 100. Now, I have found two things, hypertension. And uh, urine analysis shows moderate proteinuria. This vignette is screaming eclampsia so far. Lab studies show uh, serum levels, elevated serum levels of AST and ALT and, slight, and slightly decreased uh, platelets or thrombocytopenia. Which of the following is believed to be the initial event in the pathogenesis of her condition? Now, is it maternal hypertension or placental ischemia? In this case, it's going to be uh, placental ischemia. That is because, read the question. The question says, which of the following is believed to be the, believed to be the initial event in the pathogenesis of her condition? So what is really causing this to really kick off that it's pathogenic and you cannot control it, and that's going to be placental ischemia. Yes, maternal hypertension is one of the clues for this disease, but the pathogenesis is due to placental ischemia because that will really kill the baby and that has a bigger effect than maternal hypertension because maternal hypertension can be controlled.